सो स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी फिनिश्ड अवर एनाटमी ऑफ फेरिंग्स एंड वी हैव कवर्ड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डिजीज ऑफ फेरिंग्स ऑफ कोर्स देर आर सो मेनी अदर कंडीशन इन द फेरिंग्स बट इन एट एम बी बी एस लेवल दिस इज वॉट यू आर सपोज टू नो जब भी हम कोई टॉपिक फिनिश करेंगे देन वी नीड टू असेस अवर सेल्फ कि हमें कितना रिमेंबर कर रहा है और कितना हम उसको रिकॉल कर पाएंगे एग्जाम में और एग्जाम के अंदर में हम उस नॉलेज को कैसे अप्लाई कर पाएंगे सो डोंट वरी आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यूर टेस्ट वी गोइंग टू सॉल्व सम क्वेश्चन टूगेदर एंड वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड कि क्वेश्चन हमसे क्या पूछने की कोशिश कर रहा है और कहाँ पे हम गलतियां कर सकते हैं एंड दिस असेसमेंट टाइम इज द फन टाइम और राइट सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज which of the following is not a part of hypopharynx hypopharynx now even before you see the options you should just that image should come in your mind hypopharynx piriform fossa posterior pharyngeal wall post phycoid region all right so you know it is hypopharynx so what are the options given to you there is a piriform fossa there is a post phycoid region there is glosso epiglottic fold and posterior pharyngeal wall we know piriform fossa is a part of uh, hypopharynx so is post phycoid so is posterior pharyngeal wall so the correct answer will be c right so c is not a part of hypopharynx the other name of hy of hypopharynx is laryngopharynx right so let's go to the next question clinical question clinical questions by far i feel are the uh, best questions because uh, they actually test your aptitude jo aapne padha hai uska clinical knowledge check kar rahe hain lekin exam time mein clinical questions zara tough hote hain crack karne kyunki you've got 1 minute to solve every question and clinical questions are have a long language तो आपको वो पढ़ने में और एसेस करने के अंदर में ही आपका टाइम चला जाता है सो ट्राई टू बी फोकस्ड व्हेन यू आर रीडिंग एंड फाइंड आउट व्हाट द क्वेश्चन इज ऑल राइट नाउ अ सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड विथ रिकरेंट अपर एस्पिरेटरी ट्रैक इन्फेक्शन विथ माउथ ब्रीदिंग एंड फेलियर टू ग्रो माउथ ब्रीदिंग कर रहा है वो सिक्स ईयर का बच्चा है हाई आर्ट पैलेट एंड इम्पेयर हियरिंग so you remember what what we discussed a 5 to 6 year old child pre pubertal child coming to opd with difficulty in breathing mouth breathing snoring high arched palate and conductive hearing loss because of secretory otitis media what is the most probable diagnosis yes you got guessed it right it this is a case of adenoid hypertrophy right so this is a case of adenoid hypertrophy now if it is a adenoid hypertrophy with impaired hearing that means there is eustachian tube blockage that means there is conductive hearing loss secondary to secretory otitis media the most likely what is the, they have asked this question what is going to be the next line of treatment right so next line of treatment tonsillectomy no why will we do it for adenoids grommet insertion yes we will do but we have to also treat the cause myringotomy with grommet yes that is also the same thing adenoidectomy with grommet yes so we are going to treat the cause and we are going to treat the hearing by doing adenoidectomy with grommet right let's go to the next question yes the inner waldeyer group of lymph nodes does not include which of the following let us quickly revise what was the waldeyer group of lymph node there were lingual tonsils in front of the tongue right then there were palatine tonsils on the side there were tubal tonsils which were part of the eustachian tube yes and there were the nasopharyngeal adenoids so this was forming a ring like structure that was forming the inner waldeyer's ring there is another outer waldeyer's ring secondary to the or formed by the lymph nodes around the neck so let us see what they have asked in the question it does not include remember ye jo negative word hote hain na not except ye aapko hamesha highlight karke dimag mein rakhna chahiye so tonsils form yes tonsils are a part of the inner wall deering adenoids are there yes adenoids are there sub mandibular lymph nodes nahi ye to humne isme nahi dekha and lingual tonsils yes lingual tonsils are also there so the answer to this question is going to be sub mandibular group of lymph nodes they form a part of the outer wall deers ring right let's go to the next question crypta magna is seen in crypta magna where have we seen we have seen it in tonsils where we saw it in the tonsils if this is the diagram of the soft palate you remember here were the tonsils but i told you in the lecture on the diseases that we will not draw tonsil like this how will we draw the tonsil we will draw the tonsil like this because there are lot of crypts the crypts are there in the palatine tonsil which tonsil palatine tonsil so nasopharyngeal no tubal no palatine yes lingual no so they are present in the palatine tonsils what were the scripts just quickly remember the scripts were nothing but the pharyngeal pouch remnants so the 
pharyngeal pouch during the intrauterine life they form small spaces small bursas small crypts and the biggest crypt is called the crypta magna right good next question identify the disease is picture question nowadays neat next they are next exam bhi jo aane wala you're going to have lots of picture questions there will be radiologies there will be diseases schematic diagrams and you will have to understand what they are trying to ask all right they feel a little tough but they are not so now they are asking identify the disease what they have given you they have given you posterior wall of the pharynx and they have given you a diverticulum which is coming out of the posterior wall of the pharynx and they are asking you what this disease can be right we already know what this disease is between the inferior constrictor you know there are thyropharyngeus and there is cricopharyngeus and they form a triangular space what the triangular space is called kilian's dehiscence and what comes out of it it comes out a diverticulum that is named zenker's diverticulum what they have given you in the options laryngocele no this is not laryngocele however laryngocele is also an outpouching of the larynx but it does not come out from the kilian's dehiscence kilian's dehiscence this is kilian's dehiscence but they have not asked you what is the defect they have asked you what is the disease so if they have asked you what is the disease then we are going to go for the disease zenker's diverticulum yes this is zenker's diverticulum retropharyngeal abscess yes retropharyngeal abscess also comes out in the posterior part of the pharynx but that's an infective disease it is not an outpouching to iska answer kya hoga zenker's diverticulum remember whenever you get a question before looking at the options try to think what your mind is saying what your hunch is aapka dil kya keh raha hai then try to find out match that answer with the options given all right whatever is the closest but here of course the answer is zenker's diverticulum zenker's diverticulum remember what is the most important investigation of choice we remember it is varium swallow yes the investigation of choice is varium swallow right good next question another clinical questions okay a 13 year old boy has come to your opd with complaints of recurrent epistaxis all right and hearing loss right so he has recurrent epistaxis and hearing loss so that means something is going on in the nose maybe posterior part of nose because of which eustachian tube is getting blocked he has a red fleshy mass in the right nasal cavity all right so i think more than 50% of you already know what disease are we talking about keep it to yourself let's check out whether you're right or not so 13 year old boy recurrent epistaxis hearing loss red fleshy mass he also has protruding eyes and broadening of nasal bridge now we know for sure what it is this is frog face is what this kind of face is called frog face is and this is classical of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma yes all of the following are true except again remember they are asking for except c c t will show enteral sign yes it will show enteral sign was what it was anterior bowing of the maxillary sinus posterior wall of maxillary sinus and there is widening of the pterygopalatine fossa that was called holman miller sign and anterior bowing of posterior wall of maxillary sinus that is enteral sign so yes it is seen most likely theory of this is hematoma with av malformation yes we also know that this some of the theories postulate this is the remnant of the first arch artery but the most accepted theory is hematoma with av malformation biopsy is the investigation of choice i am not sure if i remember that but let's see the fourth option surgery can be done in this stage of disease all right now let's evaluate these two biopsy can be done we we read very well in the lecture of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma that biopsy should not be done it is contraindicated one of the only masses in the nose where you should not be doing a biopsy because the the vessels do not have the muscular coat so the muscular coat is not there in the wall of the vessels and they are going to bleed itni zyada bleeding hogi ki aap control karna mushkil ho jayega opd ke andar mein so no biopsy what is the this stage they have given a specific question for this stage what is this stage this stage where there is protruding of eyes that means the disease has gone into the uh, orbit and we remember orbit means the lateral spread lateral spread mein abc pterygopalatine fossa orbit and infratemporal fossa so that means it is either somewhere between type uh, stage 2b or maybe stage 2c so in this stage can you do the surgery yes of course we can do the surgery so yes surgery can be done the answer will be biopsy biopsy nahi leni hai hame angiofibroma ki ye yaad rakhna jeevan ke andar mein red fleshy mass recurrent epistaxis 
uh, features suggestive of angiofibroma, get a CT scan done first. All right, and if you are highly suspecting a case of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, do not do a biopsy. All right. So let's go to the next question. What is the next question talking to us about? The next question is telling us that which of the following is incorrect. Again, remember they are asking you a negative question. Incorrect about tonsils. Lined by squamous epithelium. Yes, we saw that the nasopharynx is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium which is coming from the nose. Or oropharynx can there may squamous epithelium and non-keratinizing which is coming from the oral cavity. So yes, this is correct. Bed of tonsil is formed by inferior constrictor. Let's go back. Superior constrictor taking its origin from the skull base and the mandible and in middle constrictor is taking its origin from the hyoid. Hyoid is below the tongue, below the tonsils. So superior constrictor is forming a part of the bed of the tonsil, not the inferior constrictor. Remember, just let's go back to this diagram. The tongue, the palate, the skull base. So superior constrictor is coming till the level of hyoid. Then from the hyoid, you've got the middle constrictor and then from the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage, you've got the inferior constrictor, right? So this is wrong. So it gives such a pleasure, no? If you have to read the option in the first we don't have to read the other option, but always read the other two options. Crypta magna is a remnant of second pharyngeal pouch. Yes, this is correct. Irwin Moore sign is seen in chronic tonsillitis. Yes, it is a cardinal sign of chronic tonsillitis. There are three cardinal signs of chronic tonsillitis, anterior pillar flushing, Irwin Moore sign and jugulodigastric lymph node. What was in your Irwin Moore sign? If you put tonsil ke par mein pressure on the tonsil, then cheesy material will come The debris, the retained food particles, all of it will come out. The pus will come out from the tonsillar crypts. So the answer here will be, the answer B, the bed of tonsil is formed by the inferior constrictor muscle. Another picture, picture, picture question. Wonderful. Give a give the Radowski signing uh, staging of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma based on the following CT film. All right. Let's try to delineate where is the growth. We can see if let us say this is the left side, this is the right side. We have not been given, but okay, not a problem. Ye hamara axial cut hai. So the axial cut is going from across our body. So this is our nose. <clears throat> right and then this is our septum this is the maxillary sinus on the either side we can see the anterior bowing of maxillary sinus abhi humne question kara kya hota hai ye antral sign and widening of the pterygopalatine fossa this is called as holmel miller sign so the growth is going from the into the medial part of the nose and partly into the nasopharynx so stage 1 to hai hi ye very good it is also going laterally into pterygopalatine fossa. So stage 2 AB ho gaya. We don't have the cut of the orbit here. So we can't say. But this is into the infratemporal fossa. And infratemporal fossa becomes stage 2C. Yes. So this is stage 2C. Stage 3 kya hota hai? Stage 3 is intracranial. Now we don't have the cuts here. In this diagram, we cannot say if it is having intracranial extension. So, this diagram ke basis pe agar hume decide karna hua ye kaun sa stage hai to hum bolenge this is stage 2C. Let us see if our thought process matches the options given. What are the options given? Stage 2A, 2B, 3A, 2C. Okay and we also thought it is 2C. So, what we will mark? We will mark D, 2C. Great. So, let's go to the next question. The next question is a first year resident is performing tonsillectomy. Alright, so operate kar rahe hai. senior resident warned him about the limit of his dissection. So, the senior resident has given him an instruction, okay, till what limit you have to operate. Which limit is he talking about? Alright, so what are the layers of the uh, pharyngeal wall? We know there is a mucosa, we know that there is a submucosa, then we know that there is a muscle muscular layer that is the constrictor layer. And in this case, we have two fascia, thi, pharyngobasilar fascia and sorry, buccopharyngeal fascia and the pharyngobasilar fascia. This is pharyngobasilar, this is buccopharyngeal, right? And we have talked about one more thing, that in the submucosal layer, we have our lymphoid tissue, hota hai, adenoids and the tonsils. So, when we have to operate, our dissection should not be crossed with the pharyngobasilar fascia. If it will cross, we will go into the muscular layer where there are rich blood vessels. So, the limit of surgery is 5 cm. So, we will have to do the So, the limit of surgery is pharyngobasilar fascia. Go back to the lecture on the anatomy and you will find the answer over there. 
सो द आंसर इज फेरिंगो बेसिलर फेशिया नॉट बको फेरेंजियल बको फेरेंजियल तक जाने के लिए तो मसल भी तोड़नी पड़ेगी अपने को सुपीरियर कॉन्स्ट्रक्टर मसल नो अगेन एट दिस लेवल वी आर गोइंग टू हैव हिमरेज एंड स्टाइलॉइड प्रोसेस स्टाइलॉइड प्रोसेस इज बिहाइंड इन द पैराफेरेंजियल स्पेस सो ऑफ कोर्स वी विल नॉट गो टिल देयर राइट सो नाउ लेट अस गो टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ टुडेस डिस्कशन अ 40 ईयर ओल्ड पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड विद राइट साइडेड थ्रोट पेन सो देयर इज अ राइट साइड थ्रोट पेन ईयर एक और राइट एंड मफल्ड वॉइस मफल्ड वॉइस व्हेयर डिड वी हियर मफल्ड वॉइस मफल्ड वॉइस हमने देखी थी हॉट पोटैटो वॉइस जैसे किसी ने गरम गरम उबला हुआ आलू मुंह में रख दिया he was febrile so temperature bhi hai and on examination mouth opening was reduced to one finger so that means the patient is also having trismus all of this is classical of quincy yes so we are talking about quincy over here para pharyngeal para tonsillar abscess but the question is not that the question is most likely cause of referred otalgia so the patient has earache so these are also some kind of questions where they will give you lot of information but that information is not important for us they have given that information to make the diagnosis but the question is cause of referred otalgia what is the sensory nerve supply of the oropharynx that is ninth nerve glossopharyngeal also that is the nerve that is supplying the middle ear so therefore the cause of referred otalgia is going to be glossopharyngeal trigeminal no in oropharynx trigeminal nerve doesn't come the only place it supplies is tensor villi palatini but we're talking about sensations right now facial nerve no again it doesn't come in the oropharynx glossopharyngeal nerve yes vagus nerve yes vagus nerve is an important nerve we saw all the muscles of the pharynx are supplied by the vagus nerve but we are not talking about motor supply here we're talking about the pain sensation so the sensory supply is by the glossopharyngeal nerve and that is going to give rise to the referred otalgia wonderful so i think by these 10 questions we have quickly summarized all the parts of the pharynx the anatomy the diseases and applied anatomy and how to tackle questions that have got figures in them right so this is how after every topic we are going to discuss all the questions and we are going to solve them together aapke aap akele nahi ho you are not going to you are going to take tests on your own but with me you are going to solve all the questions together i am not evaluating you i am with you till the end and we will solve next bye